I'm Scott L. Miller. It is the 10th of August, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua, and today we're doing something very, very different. We're going to be doing a countdown, a countdown of 100 and three of the things you could do if you live in Nicaragua. We had a recent question, will I get bored if I live in Nicaragua? And it occurred to me, we could do a countdown and talk about a bunch of things that in no particular order, we're not gonna do anything specific. We're just gonna go over 103 things that you could be doing in Nicaragua, many of which you may never have thought of. All right, for doing today's show, I'm going to be using my phone because I have to have a lot of notes. So this is very different. And a lot of you are gonna notice there's something else different as well. This is our first time recording in the new studio. This is brand new. This took two months to make. Thanks to Chepe who did all of the work. This is real wood, completely put together by hand, made right here on the estate. Absolutely fantastic. We came up with this idea in Managua uh, from the restaurant Pane y Paz, uh, no, Pane y Vino, and they do something similar on, on part of their wall. And I said, this is gorgeous. I love this design. We found pictures of it. I said, can we do something like this? And it's very different. That one is uh, uniform in like a pattern. This is kind of a random wood, but it's, it's this gorgeous veneer of wood, all real local wood um, used to make this. So, I'm loving this and I'm experimenting with what the lighting is gonna be like in here. This is horrible lighting. I just turned on one light, uh, so there's enough light, but it's, it's absolutely not what we want for lighting. I have new lights that have arrived. I need to get stands out and diffusers and figure out how we're gonna do lighting in the room. So that is my next project, but this is my very first time filming with this in the background. So say hello to the new studio wall. And it's not done yet. There's some cool stuff that we're working on, but it is a start and this is my first time filming here in the studio like this. I'm attempting to see how it works with the EM1 Mark II and the studio lights and the new wall. So it's gonna be an experiment over time as we, as we try to incrementally turn this up uh, and turn this into a real studio. Right now, we have the quilts on one wall. I have to get quilts up on another wall and I need to get curtains up. That's gonna help dampen the sound quite a bit because there's still a bit of echo. Shouldn't be terrible, but because uh, this wall is taking a lot of that out, but there's still some work we need to do. So we're working on that one little thing at a time, but I'm very excited about how this has the potential to turn out. So we're gonna be experimenting a lot as you guys follow along, but that is the news. We're gonna get right to this list because I think it's gonna be interesting and, and totally, totally different. All right, at 103, I added, I wanted to do 100 and then I just had a few extra things. I'm like, no, I should put these in. At 103 is gardening. How many people think about going out and gardening in Nicaragua? And yet a lot of people do that here. A lot of the, those of us who actually live here so I have a garden, I don't do gardening, but I know people who have gardens and that's something that they enjoy doing, especially if you're coming from like England or someplace where gardening is a major part of the culture. Absolutely, you can do that here. No reason you can't. It's gonna be a little bit different, of course, but that's an activity that you just make. Of course, you can do that. If someone asked you, could you garden there? You say, well, obviously you must be able to. Yes, but who would have thought of it? So there it is. 102, watch the surf competitions. We have regular surf competitions in this country. You can travel to one of many different beaches and watch them. Beach volleyball at 101. Again, yes, it's a sport, yes, it's the beach, but that's something that you may not have thought of that is something we do from time to time. We head to the beach and watch the beach volleyball competitions. That's a lot of fun, something different to do. At 100, visit Isla Mancaron. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that one terribly. That is a southern island, the, the southernmost island within the mainland of Nicaragua. It is very rarely visited. It is a good tourist spot, but it is a very hard one to get to. And so people don't tend to go there. If you live here, of course, you can take the time to go there normally. If you're bored and looking for some way to keep yourself entertained, that's a great place to go explore. At number 99, the Statue of the Christ at San Juan del Sur. This is the second largest uh, statue of Christ in the world after 
after the incredibly famous one at Rio de Janeiro, uh, well worth going to see. Of course, we don't just mean driving into town and looking up at the hill, we mean going up to the top of the hill and actually visiting the monument and seeing the beach from high above on the hillside great activity. At 98 Visit and Arboretum. We have Arboretums all around the country. We have them here in Leon, we have them in Managua, we have them up in uh, El Crucero, for example, and uh, that can be a great way to spend the afternoon, something that I enjoyed doing when I lived in New York, for example, uh, upstate New York. At 97, simply visit another city. Wherever you're living in the country, you have loads of other cities that are full of different restaurants and, and bars and uh, uh, miradors and parks and music and whatever and shops go do some shopping go see the museums go do whatever it is go visit another city that's something that you would do if you lived in the united states if you lived in canada you live in if you live in uh montreal you're going to go visit ottawa right and you know it's just fun to go visit another city the same applies here you can do that quite easily at 96 mill flores park and the miradors of el crucero El Crucero is a high mountain ridge a little bit west of the Volcano Messiah and it gets completely different weather than the rest of the country because of its high location and the volcanic breeze that goes across it and it makes it a really austere interesting spot and it's got a number of miradors you could spend an easy hour just visiting the miradors up there and it has this uh mil flores park which is a thousand flowers park uh and that should be a really neat uh garden kind of experience and of course you can go get food while you're there or go see something connected to a trip to somewhere else absolutely but it could be a destination if you're looking to keep yourself occupied absolutely and number 95 the ancient footprints of Acahualinca. This is a barrio on the northwest side of Managua. There is a, a museum there of footsteps. I believe they are 15,000 uh, years old uh, that are um, in uh, what used to be liquid volcanic ground. And um, it's, it's an interesting museum location in Managua that a lot of people don't know about. A lot of visitors are not aware of. Obviously, Nicaraguans have a tendency to go there in school, uh, but it is a neat thing to go see. We've never filmed it on the show. It has been mentioned uh, to our crew that we want to go do that, and hopefully I'll be bringing you an episode on that sometime in the near-ish future. Uh, this one is seasonal, but if you're living here and bored or worried about being bored, then seasonal things are important. Uh, the Managua Christmas displays on Avenida Bolivar. This we did two years ago, and it's fantastic. Fantastic. My kids love going to do it. They do uh, life-size nativity scenes, meaning they take entire buildings and turn them into nativity scenes right on the main drag. Tons of Christmas lights, huge Christmas tree displays, absolutely beautiful, tons and tons of people out there. It's a, it's a ton kind of event. Um, well worth going to see, easy to do. Just park somewhere in the city or take a taxi and just walk and go through this huge lit boulevard that just goes on and on. Our kids had so much fun just driving through it and they always want to go back. And it was one of the things that they're disappointed if we're not going to be here for the Christmas season, that is something that they wish they could see because they, they liked it that much. They like it way better than any they have found in the United States. Number 93, take a boat down the Rio San Juan. This is a major river in the southeast portion of the country. Go take a boat down that. You can take a ride from the lake all the way to the Caribbean. And that's very interesting and different. It would be a little bit like doing an Amazon boat ride on a much smaller, much less wild scale. At number 92, Gulf Volcano Lake Diving at Laguna de Chiloa. This is a volcanic lake just northwest of Managua in an area that most uh, tourists know nothing about. But there is a volcanic lake up there and unlike uh, Laguna de Apoyo, there's actually diving up there. As far as I know, you can't do that in Laguna de Apoyo. Uh, at Laguna de Chiloa, there's actually a diving business you can go and dive into the volcanic lake which uh, i'm not a diver but that's something completely different than you would normally do uh, number 91 head into managua and see an american football game and i don't mean on tv i mean they have an american football league in managua we don't it's not big enough that we have it around the country as far as i know all the teams are in or around managua but there is a league and they do compete and it is generally free to attend go and enjoy that if that's something you miss of course it's going to be completely different than you get in the united states but if you're into sports and you miss american football in any way get out there there's both men's and women's leagues. There's also mixed leagues. There's a lot of sports in this country, so 
things you may not expect, like American football, are going to be options. At number 90, go watch a boxing match with the locals. I generally don't mean uh, to go see an uh, in-person boxing match, although that is potentially an option. Boxing is a very big sport here. It's sport number two in the country, uh, soccer being number three, or football being number three. Uh, but uh, it is really common when there's a boxing match on that everybody gathers at the local bar and watches the match there, the fight there. So if uh, that's something you're interested in at all, that is a very cultural thing to do. Uh, I've done it a number of times. I'm not into boxing at all, but it's very cultural. And I know the first time I ever did it was long ago when we lived in Granada eight years ago, and I went and watched the boxing match at Pizza Valle in Granada. And I just happened to be there at the right time, and everyone was hanging out watching. Uh, and it was Nicaragua versus the United States, so it was super popular. Uh, at number 89, you'll never guess that this is one you can do, but you can go visit a tea room. Yes, just like you would in the United States where we're mimicking British tea rooms as it is. We have those here in Nicaragua as well. I know for a fact there's one at Plaza Natura that it looks really popular, it looks really nice. Um, I've not actually managed to go, but we've talked about the kids want to go. Uh, but that's, again, these are just who would have actually taken the time to think, ah, oh, a tea room in Nicaragua. Of course you can, like they could exist, but do they? Yes. Uh, number 88, do the historic church tour in Leon or Granada. Both Leon and Granada are loaded with uh, very old, very beautiful churches that you can go tour. Uh, you can do walking tours of the city. You could take a cab. You can get a like a pedicab or something of that nature to take you around the city and go see church after church after church if that's something that you're interested in. The beautiful architecture, the little parks that go with them, see a lot of the city very quickly. That's a big thing to do. In Granada, the horse-drawn carriage tours go by many of the churches and so you see them that way. That is something missing in Leon, so you tend to do walking tours here, uh, but many churches available in both cities. You can, of course, drive around the country and see churches in any city. That would be more of a visit a city thing like we mentioned, but very few of the other cities have these huge church tours in the way that Granada and Leon do. They really stand out as uh, easily walkable to, you know, something like between 15 and 20 major churches that you could get all within one day, especially if you have like uh, a Caponero driving you around pretty quickly. And number 87, visit the, it's actually a museum, but the Convent of San Francisco in Granada. This is a really big, important church, so technically it'll be on your church tour, but it's also a convent museum and a great place to go. You can, if you're in Leon, also see a convent museum, but it's tiny and it's been turned into a hotel, so it's much more accessible that you can just go in and get a drink or dinner at the hotel and see the convent that way, but uh, they do have a small museum attached to it. The one in Granada is a major museum with it. Uh, at 86, go see a waterfall. And this is all over the country. Uh, Ometepe has some good waterfalls. Matagalpa is loaded with them. M much of the north has waterfalls down here in Leon. You're pretty much out of luck. There are, like, this is just a thing, right? You would do this somewhere else. Come do it here. At number 85, the Museum of Myths and Legends in Leon. We did this on an episode. It's a great museum. It's not going to take you a lot of time, but it is a fun diversion. Number 84, visit Mombacho Nature Preserve. This is the giant uh, cratered volcano in Granada, just outside the city. They have a giant uh, nature preserve. It's a cloud forest. You can climb up to it. And, uh, and visit that and go exploring. It is a really neat thing to do. It's a bit of hiking, so be prepared, but definitely really neat. At number 83, visit the Pre-Columbian Museum at Chaguitillo. This is just north of uh, Sabaco, I believe, and um, I've never been there. Again, on my list, very hard for us to get to from here, so it's not one we just run to uh, at a, on a whim, but with the car we could run up there, and I do want to do it. I need to find out it when it's open uh, and film that for you guys. And number 82, go see Matagalpa from the Mirador. This is a major activity actually in Madagalpa. The Mirador in Madagalpa is so extreme. It is so high, uh, so hard to get to, so beautiful that it, it is the attraction of the city. Uh, so you gotta go through the barrios, you gotta have a good car, get a taxi, just don't do it with your own car. They climb way up the mountain and there is a huge multi-story Mirador structure up there. There's a restaurant and stuff and uh, you can go out and go out all different levels and overlook the entire city. It it is such a big city. It is such an amazing Mirador. There is nothing else like it. It is so 
worth it. Uh, it's something I would do many times. It's not a, a one-time kind of thing. It's a, I'm going to be a Madagalpa. Someone wants to see the Mirador. I want to go do that kind of thing. Number 81, hike Miraflor Nature Preserve. This is really far in the north, uh, and not very many tourists do it, but it's supposed to be absolutely spectacular. I say supposed to be because I've not done it again. Would love to. These are a lot of things that I want to put on my list, right? My own personal list of things to do. And number 80, of course, stay home and play video games. I do this with my kids. But I think a lot of people forget that that part of their culture from back home, they can bring with them and do here. Number 79, visit pottery artisans in the white villages. This is uh, places like uh, San Juan de Oriente in, in Southern Messiah, uh, famous for uh, villages just full of people doing handmade pottery. Really beautiful things that range from just normal household goods all the way to museum pieces. You could easily spend a whole day uh, exploring that. Number 78, go to the Mirador and shop for plants in Katarina. We did an episode, our very first episode of uh, uh, This is Nicaragua. It was filmed at Katarina and they have a really famous Mirador, second only to the one at Madagalpa, in my personal opinion of, of, I don't know how to rank fame of Miradors in the country, uh, but it overlooked Laguna de Apoyo. It is breathtaking. You could spend an entire afternoon just at the Mirador. A lot of vendors up there. It's much, much more accessible than the one at Madagalpa, so it gets a lot more people. Uh, and you don't necessarily have to go down into the lake. You don't have to deal with all the, if you see my episodes on how hard it is to deal with getting in and out of the lake, you don't have to do any of that to get to the Mirador at Katarina. And the village of Katarina is famous as the place that grows all the house plants. It's full of nerves. Uh, and so people from all over the country normally go there, even if they're not going up to see Laguna de Apoyo, uh, to go buy their houseplants. It is, it is just, you drive down the streets, you walk the side streets, and it is just viveros or nurseries everywhere. Really interesting and fun. Good place to go shopping and a good place to do something completely different. At 77, the Florida Canyon Tour that takes place just north of here uh, in Chichigalpa between Leon and, uh, and, and Chinandega. That is a great afternoon. It's kind of a museum. It is a working distillery. It is uh, probably the biggest formal uh, um, uh, tourist destination in the country not to be missed. If you're gonna be in the country, really think about doing that. And if you live here, it should be on your list of things you do at least every few years. Like go support our local businesses, get the word out. When people come visit you, that's a thing to go do for sure. We had so much fun doing that um, almost two years ago. I'm really looking forward to a chance to go back again. It's just, it's a really nice tour. We, uh, Dominica and I really enjoyed it. Number 76, I think I already said this one and I, I meant to say, uh, stay home and watch Netflix or whatever, right? Watch some shows. Like just because you're here in Nicaragua, you're not giving up the ability to watch things on TV, right? You, you can still do that. And while we don't very often, once in a while, that's just the thing you want to do. The real thing, and I think this particular one more than any other item, if you were living in the United States or Canada, chances are you would think of this as this is the default and everything else is an exception from it. And here, very likely, what you're gonna feel and what we certainly feel is that going out and doing some kind of activity is the normal and the staying in to watch TV, that's the exception. That's the special case. Uh, so it needs to be on the list because it's easy to forget that that remains an option. What are we doing tonight? You know, we could stay in and make popcorn, order food and watch a movie. Oh. Oh, I, yeah, I guess we can. I, who would have who would have thought? At 75, go see the Ballet Folklorico. You're only going to want to do this about once a year or so, but it is a beautiful folk tale told through dance. It is a very important part of Nicaraguan culture, and you can go see it where it's done in its home village, Didiamba, uh, or like we saw it here in Leon this year with the National Ballet. Absolutely beautiful. I had such a good time. So glad that I did that. Uh, that is something that you see bits and pieces of throughout the year. Uh, but if you take the time to actually go see it, it is something really, really good. Uh, I recommend doing a little bit of studying uh, at a minimum of the story of El Guiguense, uh, which helps give you a background as to what you're seeing. Uh, number 74, go visit one of the countless gastro parks. The country is full of gastro parks. It is part of the culture now. It has just sprung up in the last few years and every city has several. It's just fun. And many times they have live music. Uh, often they have some kind of activity to do and lots of food and drink variety. It's just 
They're just fun. So go give one or many of those a try. At number 73, visit the Chorotega Nicarau Museum in Chinandega. We did this one in the last two months. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy to get to, beautiful museum. It's not gonna take you a long time, but it's a great museum and well worth going out and supporting the community and learning about the history of the Chinandega region. At number 72, go to a video game arcade, like actually like the old days. Go to the mall or some other places and they have traditional video game arcades that you can go to and, and, and put in your quarters and play. Uh, we have not actually done that ourselves very much. We did a little bit. We did actually did it for an afternoon with the kids and it was fun. Something different. At number 71, laser tag. Yeah, we've got an amazing laser tag course in Managua. We really enjoy it. Uh, number 70, bowling. There's not a lot of bowling in the country, but there is bowling. We have at least one really good bowling alley. If you enjoy that, definitely go give it a try. All right, at number 69, go watch the Higantona Parade. Now this is one specific to, to Leon, but if you're somewhere else, take the time to come into Leon. It is a gorgeous parade, really cool. Uh, I filmed a lot of it, including for Nicaragua 360. So if you wanna see the whole thing in 360 degrees, you can, you can go check it out there. Uh, but it, it's super interesting because it's a big cultural event uh, from the indigenous community. Uh, number 68, go watch or participate in a religious procession. Everyone is welcome, of course. These are like parades, but they are religious and they go through many of the cities. You get lots of these throughout the year, so you don't have to pick a specific one. You could go do this in any number of places, and if it's something you end up enjoying, you could do many of them because they have great variety as you move around the country. Uh, so you could end up going to 20, 30 of them and having something different every time. And number 67, get coffee and people watch in Matagalpa. Not a lot of cafe culture in the rest of the country, but Matagalpa definitely has it in spades. Get some coffee up there and enjoy yourself do that cafe thing like as if you're in Paris or whatever. It's not exactly like Paris, but it's pretty cool. At 66, take the bus to Antigua, Guatemala. Okay, so this is not exactly a thing to do in Nicaragua, but if you're living here, you kind of have to include things like this because a major part of the value of the Nicaragua experience is having easy accessibility to lots of other super cool places. One of those is Guatemala, and there's a bus from uh, Leon here that goes directly to Antigua. It is very easy and makes for a really good amount of entertainment. It's quite affordable. It's not it's not cheap, like some of these things are basically free, um, but this one would cost a little bit, but it's not terrible. Antigua is um, a good hike away, but it's, you know, you can do it on the bus and very different, the whole, and, and then you have access to Guatemala, but you can easily go up to Antigua and use it as a vacation destination, do different food, different weather, different crafts, different music, um, while still seeing an important colonial town and one loaded with museums. It is a tourist center like nothing in Nicaragua, uh, closest to Granada if you're gonna compare it. Uh, so, so have that expectation, it's very touristy, but you're there to be a tourist, enjoy it. All right, at number 65, visit the History and Archaeology Museum in Esteli. This was closed when I was last up there, but I plan to go up to Esteli sometime when it's open and film this one. It looks really cool. It's a great location on the north side in the middle of the city. Number 64, go to a football match. That is soccer for most of you. Uh, this is not the number one sport. It's not even the number two sport in the country, but it is important and there are a number of soccer teams. So that's something that if you're into sports, again, get out there, support your local team, support someone in Nicaragua, just go see some games and enjoy yourself. There's always something to go to. Speaking of, at number 63, this is our number one sport, attend a baseball game. Now, this is what I do. We really enjoy it. We have the number one team in the country, absolutely far and away best team in the country is right here in Leon. Uh, and not only have we enjoyed going to see them the last few seasons, but they have the biggest stadium in Latin America, we are told, being constructed on the south side of town. We're watching it go up and we cannot wait to be going to our games there. That is gonna be really fun. I'm gonna uh, get more footage over the next year or so as they finish the stadium. And when we're able to get in there and watch the games, you can count on that we will be in there recording it for you. At 62, attend the Ipico. Now I just did this the other day. I haven't put up the footage yet, but we've been to four of these so far this season. We've been to Nagarote, we've been to uh, Leon, we've been to Managua, and now we've been to Granada. Granada is the one we have not yet posted. Uh, these are giant horse parades that go through the city 
cities the entire summer season in Nicaragua. There, This is on a circuit. You get the schedule and it just goes from city to city every week and it is epic. It's basically a giant roving drunken party that moves through the streets with horses and people getting stepped on. And then sometimes there's something connected with it. For example, in Leon, there is a rodeo. In Granada, there's the running of the bulls. There's a bunch of different things. So lot, you can go to quite a few of these uh, and make it a big thing. We have done four and would like to do more. Like we're really enjoying it. At number 61, go to the Pre-Columbian History Museum near Sabaco. Sabaco. Uh, so I have the location on the other one wrong. This is another museum uh, that I definitely wanna go see. Um, there's, there's actually, there's many museums around the country and they do not get enough traffic. So anytime you can get out and make going to see a museum, something that you do with your spare time, good to do. Number 60, similar to the last one, take the bus to the beaches of El Salvador. Just as easy as it is to go to Antigua, you can take the bus to the famed surf and rock beaches of El Salvador. They, uh, in the southern half of the country, they're not that different than Nicaragua. In the northern half, they are very different, and I would compare them to southern Italy. Beautiful and variety, which is a big deal when you're looking for keeping yourself busy. Variety is important, and this is a way to, you know, even though you can go to the beach in Nicaragua, and I highly recommend it, Sometimes going to the beach in El Salvador will give you a very different experience that you'll very much appreciate. Number 59, go see the ruins of the National Cathedral. This is the famed Cathedral of Managua. It is right by the National Palace and it is a beautiful ruin, uh, very similar to the ruins of the Cathedral at Antigua, Guatemala as well. Number 58, visit the Museum of the Revolution. Now this really should be the Museums of the Revolution. We have an important one here in Leon. There is another one downtown on the square in Granada. There's one in Managua. I'm sure there are many of them all over the country. Uh, well worth visiting. All of them have a different story to tell. All of them have uh, different artifacts and such. And of course the museum guides are often people who have been involved in the revolution. So there's a lot of firsthand, very tangible, because this all happened relatively recently, right? Within my life fan. Friends of ours have lived through things that happened here, right? Lots of people we know were alive during the, the revolution and the subsequent uh, Contra Wars and all of that is something that um, is a good opportunity now to see before that living history is gone and there's only the museums left. At number 57, go to a water park. These are quite popular. You may have guessed because this is a very warm country. We're warm year round so water parks never stop operating. We have some towns like Talika not far from here in Leon that is famous for being a town of water parks, but Leon itself has several as well. And of course, Managua does, and most of the major uh, areas have access to a water park, whether it's just a small set of swimming pools or someplace with giant slides. There's almost always something, whether it's on the beach, and many of them are in the interior. So if you like that, go give that a try. And number 56, visit the lakefront beaches at Porto Mombotumbo. Beautiful beaches. I don't know if I would go swimming there, but lakefront and not on Lago Nicaragua, which is what everyone thinks of. It's on Lago Xolitlan, uh, which is Lago Managua, uh, but on the North Shore and uh, just completely different, right? Totally, totally different vibe. Uh, they do have restaurants and some beachfront activities and you can go to the beachy thing. It's very small scale, but it's also much less expensive. So just, uh, you know, we're looking for a variety here and I think it's a great choice. At 55, go see the deep water port at Corinto. A little bit different visiting a port, but I have done this and it was really interesting and it made a very popular episode that helped kick off the channel. So I do recommend it. Uh, it's interesting just to see a very different part of Nicaragua. It's not exactly a city, so it's not like you're visiting a city. It's not exactly a beach. There are some beaches. There are some good restaurants. There is some shopping. It's a fair sized village. It has a beautiful downtown park, not huge. It does have a railroad museum. Some of the railroad tracks are still there, uh, but importantly, it is the only major deep water port in the country is where all the container ships come in from the Panama Canal and from China. And so it's interesting and a good place to go see a part of the infrastructure of Nicaragua in action. At number 54, visit the Ruben Dario Museum. This is his birthplace house. It is located in Laborio, in the Barrio Laborio of uh, Leon, which is very close to here and just two blocks from my old house. Uh, Ruben Dario, for those who are not aware, is basically the William Shakespeare of Spanish, very important uh, writer of letters and poems, uh, and he's from right here in Leon and is a national figure throughout Nicaragua. At 53, go to the hotbeds at San Jacinto. We did this in a recent episode within the last two months. Fantastic. 
fantastic. It is bubbling mud at the base of two volcanoes. It's not something you're very likely to see anywhere else. It's very difficult to find anything like this. It was incredibly interesting. Get a guide to make sure you stay safe. Uh, and very cheap, like $1. At 52, visit the ruins of Leon Viejo. This is the old city of Leon before it moved. The city was not wiped out exactly. They knew it was likely to be wiped out, so they shifted the city to its current location. So it's not like a Pompeii per se, but there are a lot of the buildings there are, are under ash in the way that Pompeii is, but there were not humans there uh, to be covered in ash. So there wasn't a catastrophic event uh, that caused loss of human life or anything like that, but there was uh, a major volcanic event that covered the buildings that had been abandoned because people knew that a catastrophic event was likely to happen. Uh, but a lot of good history up there. It's a great museum. They give you a guide. They walk you through the whole grounds. Very, very good. Tie it with your uh, later trip. Do that in the morning. Go to Porto Mombotumbo in the afternoon and you've got a great day. You can spend the night there or go to the port, spend the night, get up and do the museum either way. 51, take the boat to the entertainment island in Lago Managua. If you're going to be in the Puerto Salvador Allende, which is the beautiful private pay to get in, not private, but uh, pay to get in, not open to the public, um, publicly held uh, pier zone in Managua. It's the big entertainment district there. Uh, from there, you can take a cruise ship on the small lake, and it takes you to a private island that's full of activities and amusement stuff there. I've not done that. I really want to. This should be really cool. And number 50, the thing that led us to that, do the boardwalk at Salvador Allende. This is uh, during the day, there's nothing really to do there, but at night, this becomes kind of like a big open fair. There is roller coasters and water parks and tons of restaurants and, uh, you know, vendors in the streets and playgrounds. And it's very cheap to get in, like under a dollar. And um, there's a lot to do there. So especially if you have kids, but even if you don't, it is a very popular date location. And on weekends, it gets really hopping. During the week, uh, you're, a lot of things stay closed. Um, but when it's busy, it is, it's really fantastic. At 49, see a show at the Ruben Dario National Theater. This is one of the most important archae archae um, um, <laughs> architectural structures in the country because it is one of the few really large structures, uh, very tall structures that was built prior to the earthquake and it survived it. It is still in perfect shape today. Uh, I've been there, I've seen shows. It's a very nice theater and it's a neat part of uh, Managuan history to get to see a structure uh, from that. So they're very proud of it. It is in a beautiful location and a lot of shows are there all the time. So you can go see music or plays or, or cultural events or whatever. Just look at its schedule online. Uh, number 48, visit Granada's famous cathedral. It's not the largest, but it is probably the most beautiful in the region. It is stunning and it is uh, often seen as the symbol of the country. If you're going to be visiting Granada or anywhere near Granada, you have to go to the main square and see the cathedral. You don't necessarily have to go in. I mean, of course, if that's what you're there to see, go in. But Really seeing it from the outside is, is kind of the thing. At number 47, go swimming in Laguna de Apoyo. Laguna de Apoyo is a volcanic crater lake up in the volcanoes, like way up above Granada. It's completely unique. It is not something you're gonna find anywhere else. Very cold, uh, very deep, and uh, exclusive. So cannot possibly recommend enough. At 46, visit the Nindiri Dinosaur Park. We did this on a recent episode, uh, a lot of fun. Took the kids, it is a public park with uh, really good like, like horticulture and, and um, you know, gardening everywhere. It's got water features. It has lots of sculpted dinosaurs. There's no animatronics. There's no big educational museum. I wish there was, but it is a phenomenal park and worth a visit. And there's also a children's park that's just been built next to it. There is a baseball stadium connected to it. There are lots of vendors. So if you want to get food or just to spend some relaxing time in the afternoon in Nindiri, just outside Messiah, outside of Messiah, that's a great thing to do. I, I really, we, all of us were really happy that we went. And number 45, get souvenirs and local crafts from the Mercado in Messiah. There's two Mercados in Messiah. One is the artisan's market. That is the tourist market where everything is very expensive and you need to be very careful because everyone is out to gringo price you or to just pick your pockets. Uh, it is in a stunningly beautiful stone building in the middle of the city. It is easy to get to. And realistically, if you're just looking for some souvenirs, it is a great location for that, yes, go check it out. If you're a tourist, go check it out. If you are living here, if you're one of us who are always here, it is probably not something you want to go do, 
What you want to do is go to the city market, which is harder to find. It is many times larger, and it is the real largest market in the country. I believe it's the largest. Oriental in Managua may be the largest. Also visit that, another 104 you just got for free right there. Um, but the one in Messiah is considered the best one. It is the one where you go for all the actual uh, uh, craftsmen in the country at reason, made for Nicaraguans, not made for tourists. And I will be there in an episode coming up in just a few days. I have custom shoes being made by a shoemaker in that market, for example. So something that you're able to do there. Also, really big place to pick up hammocks or to get baskets made or flowers or any number of things. The market is enormous. We filmed just just the tip of one little edge of it. Uh, at some point, we will go back and do a full filming of the market, go do crazy amounts of shopping and show you guys all kinds of stuff, but uh, we'll give you just a teaser coming up in a few days. Uh, number 44, take the horse-drawn carriage history tour in Granada. This is a must do, one of my favorite things in the country. It's so relaxing to sit in a horse-drawn carriage and get a history tour around this amazingly beautiful city. Yeah, I've done it like four times, I think. I did it at least once in, in 2015. I know I did it in 2019. I know I did it in 2022. Uh, that's three times, and I'm sure I've done it at least one other time in there with someone else who came to visit. I always am happy to go do that. At 43, take Spanish lessons from a local. Whether you want our channel to hook you up with our channel's uh, Spanish teacher, who, by the way, you're able to get Spanish lessons from us currently at just $95 per month for in-person lessons. It's not really meant to be sponsored, but it's a great spot to plug it. That is through us. Info at RelocateNicaragua.com is an actual Nicaraguan Spanish teacher, someone who's a trained language teacher, um, normally who teaches English. Uh, they will teach Spanish in the Nicaraguan sense. So, you, you know, I highly recommend do like Duolingo, do a bunch of things, and then like three times a week, do an in-person in -person video uh, lesson with a teacher online. So you get that back and forth conversation, but with a Nicaraguan. So you hear the Nicaraguan accent, you learn the Nicaraguan words, expressions, and so forth. If you take classes through, for example, Guatemala, it's more universal, but we don't speak like Guatemalans here. It is quite a bit different. 40, but you can get lessons all over. You can get them in person if, if you live here. If you're distant, just you know do it online. You have lots of options, but it's a, it's a good thing to do here. Very affordable when you live here. Uh, number 42, climb the clock tower at La Merced, Granada. Beautiful, old, very damaged church. Uh, very close to where I used to live, like right down the street. And a big thing to do there, one, is film the outside of it because it's gorgeous, but also to go up its tower because its tower has a view down one of the main drags looking right at the Cathedral of Granada. So it's one of the best views because you see the cathedral and the lake. And if you get it just right, you've got the sun setting, uh, rising, I'm sorry, rising over the lake, coming through the cathedral onto La Merced, plus the restaurant at the hotel at La Merced at its base. Very nice as well. Uh, all right, number 41, catch a flight and go to the Corn Islands. The Corn Islands are Nicaragua's Caribbean islands. They are out in the Caribbean. They are full on Caribbean islands in every way. If you want that Caribbean island experience for a few days, you have it, you don't have to leave the country. At number 40, take the bus for a weekend trip to San Jose, Costa Rica. Just like our other ideas to go to the north on the bus, you can go south and go to the big city at San Jose, and this will give you a completely different regional experience. Uh, it's We like to do it for several days, um, hit the museums, go to lots of restaurants that we don't have here, do some shopping that we don't have here. It's certainly a lot more expensive, but it's a really nice bit of, activity, something to keep us very uh, entertained for a little bit. We, we appreciate it a lot when we go and we appreciate very much returning. At number 39, take a fishing excursion from San Juan del Sur. You can do this in other parts of the country, but no one does it as much and as well as San Juan del Sur. You can catch big fishing boats and go out uh, pretty far, do any type of fishing excursion you can imagine. I know down there I've heard of people catching like marlin and stuff like that. Um, up here you can do it in the Leon area. Um, I do have friends who do go do fishing, like deep sea fishing. I don't know, deep sea, but like far out. Uh, and they're going out and catching like tuna and stuff like that from the Leon beaches. So I know it can be done, but I think in San Juan del Sur it's much more like fishing excursion 
excursion, and I think up in Leon, it's much more like big fishing boat that you can take. Um, at number 38, take the Egret Scouting Boat Cruise in Juan Venado. Isla of Juan Venado is a preserve uh, in the Leon zone, and you can take, uh, you can get a guide, they'll put you on a boat and take you out and egrets nest in that area. You can also go look at crocodiles and crabs, and you can go see deserted beaches on remote islands and see an estuary, uh, but the, the nesting egrets is really unique and special. And number 37, go to Ometepe and visit the indigenous monoliths. So Ometepe is an island and lake. Just going to that alone is a major attraction. There are some important pre-Columbian uh, monoliths on the island. There's nothing huge to look at, but you can go see them. And I think it is worth a good trip because going to see Ometepe is so fantastic. And that's kind of the most important thing to do on the island. Do all the island stuff, but as, as ideas for, uh, for the list. And number 36, take a pottery class. You can definitely do this all over the country. Pottery is a big thing. What a fun thing to do. Take a class, learn a new skill. And number 35, go to Leon for the Azul Dario Festival. Every year we have a weekend long festival to celebrate our favorite son, Ruben Dario, here in Leon. And uh, it's a lot of fun. They do artwork and a lot of uh, cultural displays and music. And it just goes on and on. Big concerts and, and a lot of stuff to do. So it's a, it's a good time to come out, spend a little bit of time in Leon and just hang out, go do shopping. You know, all the street artisans show up, all that stuff. Number 34, attend the off-road racing events in Hinotega. We ended up stumbling on this. We have an episode on it in the last two months up in the mountains of Hinotega. They've got off-road dirt racing, like serious stuff. Thousands of people turn out, big events. Yeah, racetrack racing. Stuff you can do. Um, 33, take the ferry to San Carlos and visit a remote river city. San Carlos is on the southeast side of Lago uh, Nicaragua, and it is a very important port town on the lake and very remote. So not very many Nicaraguans even ever get there, let alone tourists. It sits where the river Rio San Juan comes into Lago Nicaragua uh, and has, you know, all the normal things that a city would have, but in a riverfront port kind of town. So it's got an interesting history, interesting vibe. Uh, and I can't wait till we get a chance to go down and film that for you guys. Uh, number 32, take the bus to Bluefields to explore the Caribbean coast. Bluefields in the southeast corner of the country. It is the capital of the, uh, the, the Mosquito Coast and is a completely different cultural experience to the rest of Nicaragua. It's a very long bus ride, so if you're going to do that, definitely spend the night, maybe a couple nights out there. Give yourself enough time to actually enjoy it because the bus ride is very long. But it's, or you can drive, of course. Uh, and in some cases, you, can, you used to be able to fly. I don't know if you currently can. Uh, and... Um, Go explore Caribbean culture and a totally different experience than elsewhere in Nicaragua. And number 31, visit the furniture makers of Masatepe. This is very popular for Nicaraguans to do. Get uh, furniture made custom, and even if you're not going to have it custom made, Nicaraguan, uh, Nicaragua is famous for its furniture making, and there is a very uh, large community of furniture makers in Masatepe, and you can just go from shop to shop to shop. You can spend days looking at all the different furniture shops and picking out rocking chairs or table, uh, dining room table sets or outdoor furniture, indoor furniture. You can talk to people about having custom made. You can, you know, get things just off the floor. Lots of options. Uh, it will keep you very occupied. Uh, if you don't live here, it may be a little bit boring because you can't really buy it and ship it very reasonably. But if you are living here and looking for things to, to keep yourself busy, it is a really good entertaining uh, thing that you can do. Uh, and we've done it a number of times recently because we always need furniture. At number 30, take a painting class. You've done pottery, also do painting. Maybe study uh, Nicaraguan art styles. All those kinds of classes, of course you can take them. At number 29, climb a volcano. This may sound crazy, but we have friends who do it every day. Uh, my wife and daughter have done it. Like, it's, it's a thing you can do. I'm not saying you should do it every day, but as, you know, go find a smaller one and have a fun day. Get some exercise and do something totally different. You live potentially in a very outdoorsy country, take advantage. Then number 28, go rafting or just visit Samoto Canyon. This is pretty far north, but it is a good sized canyon. It is one of the major tourist attractions of the country, but one of the harder ones to get to. So a lot of tourists miss it. If you're living here, you'll have time uh, to, to make it a priority to get up there. Something really beautiful to see. Uh, number 27, visit the circus. Yes, we have circus every circuses everywhere here. Um, they they come around in circuits, so it's the circus circuits and 
Every city gets them, every town gets them. Um, we see them here, like Sutiava very popularly gets them, and all the time, like maybe once a month we have one. I'm not really sure how it seems like they're never leaving, but in reality, it's probably once every month or two months, but, and they vary a lot. Some are like water features, some are, are like acrobats, some are um, um, horror, like, like, like scary, uh, um, like Halloween type stuff. Um, as far as I know, none of them have animals, so it's a bit different than in the US. Uh, and, and they're very popular. It's an important part of the culture here. So something to check out for sure. At number 26, spend the evening at your local bar hanging out with the neighbors. <laughs> seems like an obvious option but people don't realize this is this is something you can do and you're going to you're going to be busy doing these things right all these things you just do a little bit of each one and you're like or just to pick and choose you're going to be very entertained you're not going to be getting bored and number 25 go out dancing or clubbing nearly anywhere this is a dancing country even if you're just I, just, I don't know how to dance, I'm not comfortable dancing, trust me, people are fine with you. Get out and dance. Maybe don't go to a salsa night, go to some place where people are just kind of getting out on the floor and moving around. But, you know, you can always watch and learn and, and eventually go to like salsa nights where it's a little bit more formal and you're expected to dance a certain style, but no one's going to care if you don't know what you're doing. You'll just, maybe you'll be embarrassed. So it's worth learning, um, but that's, that's a really good thing to do. Uh, and, and, and if you don't go dancing at all in Nicaragua, you're going to miss an important part of the culture. This is something that we do as Nicaraguans. At number 24, go sit on the Pacific coast and just relax on the beach. Speaks for itself. Number 23, visit the famous Selva Negra or Black Forest in Matagalpa. It's technically a region, but there's kind of a resort there known as Selva Negra, and it is one of the most popular things. Nicaraguans go there all the time. It's supposed to be absolutely gorgeous. Great location. Check it out. Number 22, avoid people and spend the night watching Netflix with Pedidos John. This is kind of like the other one we said, but uh, kind of the point here is Pedidos John and Ugo provide in home delivery for food. Take an opportunity to order from some restaurants or whatever that you normally wouldn't do. Stay in and enjoy a night at your house, whether it's sitting out on the veranda and watching the stars or whatever. Number 21, go out for dinner and a concert with live bands. This is what I do. You see me talk about this all the time. You see this on the channel. But for us, this is several nights a week. For example, this coming Friday, we already have two bands. We can't decide who we want to see. Two different restaurants. It'll kind of come down to which venue they're at. Who knows? But we do this sometimes as much as four or five nights a week, typically more like two or three. But it is a major part for us and a lot of people. We have so many friends who do this all throughout the week. Uh, it, is, it is a huge part of the culture and is a huge part of how local Nicaraguans keep themselves entertained at a price point that they can afford because these events are essentially free. Maybe just go pay for a beer and you're good for the night. Uh, it's, it's, you know, lots of good bands out there playing lots of different types of music in lots of different restaurants. Just find the combination that makes sense for you and go enjoy. Remember earplugs, they play everything much louder than you would assume is even possible. Uh, Number 20, go out to trivia night at your local bar. Yes, trivia nights, often in English, are quite popular in the country. English, much more likely in Granada and San Juan del Sur. Spanish, much more likely in uh, Managua. Here in Leon, they actually do mixed. Uh, so every Monday night here downtown, there is a English and Spanish trivia night hosted at one of the bars. So that's very common. Um, and, and a lot of people really enjoy it. You get groups who do it all the time. Uh, here, it tends to be pretty informal. Uh, the one in Granada that I know, it's a lot more like there's teams that are just always there. Uh, number 19, go visit a cigar factory. There's lots of them here in the country. Uh, you could do this many times and just see different ones. Uh, number 18, visit the art museum. There's actually multiple art museums, of course, but there is a really famous one here in Leon, the Gurdian, um, uh, the Ortiz Gurdian, which is the largest museum in Central America. Uh, you really don't want to be skipping that if you, if you live here. And even if you're just visiting, you, you don't want to skip it. And number 17, this goes with the other one, right? Take a salsa class. Uh, we did this. I've done this previously when I lived in the United States, uh, but I did it here and then I broke my foot, so I need to do it again. But doing a salsa class is wonderful. Gets you out, great exercise, meet people in your community and learn an activity that is really important for going out and, and doing stuff with people uh, publicly. Because we have a lot of friends who go to a weekly salsa night downtown. Um, they're not doing classes. That's You learn how to salsa in the class, and then you go to a salsa night, and it's a big activity to meet people and have a lot of fun. 
Number 16, go to the movies, like movie theaters. We have them, they're air conditioned. It's a great way to get out of the heat. Go see a movie. It seems obvious, but when you move to a country like Nicaragua, it is so easy to forget that these things still exist and you don't see them so much. It's not advertised. You're not gonna necessarily walk past one and go, I could be at the movies but it's an option. And number 15, attend the International Gastronomic Festival. This kind of speaks for itself. The, uh, in Managua, in the conference center, they put on a big gastro park festival. Loads of different countries uh, come in and show off their food and stuff. It should be a lot of fun. And number 14, go see a play at the theater. Uh, we have a big theater here in Leon. I've never seen a play there. I have seen plays at like the Cat Theater, uh, the Teatro Gato in Managua, which was, I love that theater. It's so much fun to go see plays there. Uh, but throughout the country, of course, there's, there's gonna be places to do that. Generally, that's in Spanish, so it's a little bit more of an advanced thing for a lot of people. All right, at number 13, attend the Matagalpa Corn Festival. We did this last year. It's kind of like the, uh, the Azul Dario Festival in Leon. It's very cool, lots of food, a uh, big party in Matagalpa, big bands come in, lots to do, lots of shopping and souvenirs and fun stuff, so it's, uh, it's very popular. These are things that are mostly done by Nicaraguans uh, if you're living here. Uh, fantastic way to spend your time. Number 12, fish off the rocks in Las Penitas. So we talked about fishing in other ways. You can go fishing off the beach almost anywhere, but the rocks at Las Penitas give you an opportunity for those who like to go fishing to go quite far out, not have to stand, stand on the sand and fish farther out in the water, but without having to get in a boat. And number 11, swim in Ojo de Agua and Ometepe. Uh, Ojo de Agua in this sense refers to a, a spring, a freshwater spring in Ometepe, the volcanic island. There is a freshwater spring coming out of the volcano and there's a very popular swimming hole there. I mean, lots of people go, like it's a big thing, parking lots and the giant space and they've carved some space out. Really interesting thing to go do there. And number 10, not for everyone, but my family has done this surf the volcano that's done here in Leon at uh, Cerro Negro. And you climb the volcano and you go down on a board and uh, a little bit dangerous, but also a lot of fun. And it's one of the top things to do here in Nicaragua. If you've never done it, it's kind of, kind of a thing to do. And number nine, take surfing lessons. Okay, a little bit advanced, not for everybody, but it's a big thing. This is a big thing to do in Nicaragua, learning how to surf. And of course, if you know how to surf, then surfing will keep you occupied itself. And number eight, visit the Sutiava Museum. That is right here where I live in Sutiava. There is an indigenous museum just uh, across the square from the church. If not made it yet, we're gonna film there and bring you some of that in the future. And number seven, walk the roof of the Leon Basilica. Uh, we have the largest basilica in Central America right here in Leon, and the famous thing to do, other than standing in front of it and gawking at its size, is to climb to the roof and walk up there. You get amazing views of the city. The roof itself is white and beautiful. There are so many pictures taken up there. That is the Instagram location for Leon, and of course, you get a tour of the church as well. And number six, take a boat tour of the islets in Granada. This is really fun, and you should do this for sure if you live in Nicaragua. Um, or if you're a tourist, like this is at the very high on the list. If you're um, in Granada, there are uh, famously 365. I don't know how accurately that is counted, but that is how many they always give. 365 small islands that go out in kind of a pattern from the city of Granada. These are basically large rocks that were thrown from the volcano when it exploded many, many years ago, like tens of thousands of years ago, and uh, created this big set of islands going out into Lago Nicaragua. Uh, some of them have houses on them, some of them are full of monkeys, some of them have hotels, some of them are uh, tiny and just have a few trees, some are just rocks. It's very interesting. You can take boat tours that go all through there. You can even go stay in hotels and eat at restaurants that are on them and see some of the famous houses because there are mansions out there. There's also shacks, all kinds of things. Uh, it is extremely interesting and unique. At number five, learn how chocolate is made at the Chaco Museo. This is a chain of chocolate museums. I believe they are based out of Peru, but they have one of their busier locations right in Granada. It's right on the main stretch, very, just around the corner from where I used to live. And uh, we did this in 2019. I do have some pictures on like my Flickr you can see of it. Uh, you go and you learn how they roast chocolate. You get to do all the pieces. Um, you don't get to take one single piece of chocolate all the way through, but you do all the things from, from grinding the chocolate, roasting the chocolate, turning it into uh, like, like hot chocolate, turning it into a chocolate bar, a bunch of different things. And there's a lot of food souvenirs. There's a restaurant there. 
Um, it's a it's a really good experience, especially if you have kids. But we did it with all adults and had a really good time. It's it's you do not need kids to do that kind of thing. At number four, shop in an art gallery. Of course, all over any country, there's going to be art galleries. Nicaragua is no exception. We've seen some amazing ones. We've seen some small ones. Visit some art galleries. Go shopping. Just see what's out there. Uh, possibly decorate your home. Maybe just enjoy looking at some art, seeing what is is available. At number three, head up into the mountains. Visit a coffee plantation. These are always uh, a major attraction here, but they're hard to get to. Uh, a lot of um, educational value, a lot of variety in what you can do. You can see it in a lot of different regions. Uh, and of course, you can drink a lot of coffee. And number two, go zip lining. There's not as much zip lining in Nicaragua as one would expect. Uh, Costa Rica is kind of famous for all of its zip lining, and Nicaragua has some, but it's not everywhere in the way that you might think that it would be. But for example, at the uh, at Caterina, uh, there is some. Um, uh, Marcella from our team took her kids and went there recently. And there's some zip lining in San Juan del Sur. I believe there's some in Ometepe. S look around, you'll find some, but it's it's not a ton. But certainly a cool, you know, we're such a beautiful country with all that, the mountains and the volcanoes and the, and the jungles and the landscapes. It's a good place to go zip lining where it's available. And at number one, my final thing on the list is go visit the Vulcan Messiah. This is the volcano uh, in the city of Messiah. Technically, the volcano is in the city of Managua, but it's right up against the city of Messiah and it is named for it. You actually drive way up this giant volcano. There's a parking lot and a mirador at the top, and the view is into the open cauldron of a live volcano. It is red hot lava down there. There is sulfur gas coming off. It is wild and amazing, and there are very few places on Earth where you can consistently go see open lava that is just always there. It is a amazingly unique experience that everyone who is spending time in Nicaragua should take time to do, if not regularly, at least once. I got to do this last year and it was amazing. I keep trying to talk my kids into going. I think they will really enjoy it. They have this feeling that they don't want to look into the gaping maw of the inside of the earth, but I think it actually is a really good thing to do, especially as you drive up, it's very comfortable. Um, you can go in the daytime and return at night. There is something very special about seeing it at night because it is bright red and amazing. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. I will see all of you tomorrow.